All right, so we're ready to get started. We're going to build a computer. This is going to be for data science, and my nephew Nathan is going to be helping us. So Nathan, have you ever built a computer before? I have. Last summer I built one with my stepdad, Brian. Okay. Now, did you use AMD or did you use Intel? What did you use? I felt like AMD had a better option for what, I, what we were going for with the build, so I used an AMD Ryzen and it had four cores. Okay, very good. Yeah, we're using a Ryzen as well. This is with 12 cores, a thread ripper. <laughs> So this should be pretty much fun. So <laughs> let's let's get started. The total price budget for this computer was right around $5,000. Now, fortunately, I did not pay for all of that. I got some assistance from Nvidia. They provided a Titan RTX, which is really the centerpiece of this machine. This is the most expensive component in this computer and it is probably the best card that is available for deep learning. Highly recommended. I've started to use it already. I'm running some of my class examples through it to see how fast it is. Things that would have taken probably a day in Google Colab. I was able to finish this ResNet in just the time really that it took me to set up this video, so maybe 20 minutes. So I'm going to talk about the rationale for what I put into this machine. I'm going to show you how I actually built it give you an idea of what is entailed in actually building a computer. Now, there is a lot that goes into building a computer and it's not necessarily for everyone. So I'm going to have videos in the future where I also talk about a more out of the box solution and how you might buy a computer, particularly with a mobile processor that allows you to run this kind of thing. So let's talk about just first the design of this computer before I get into showing you how I actually built it. Basically, I had to choose between the CPU and GPU, and I view those as sort of the two decisions that everything rolls down the hill from there. The GPU, I chose NVIDIA. One, I was provided an NVIDIA, a very good NVIDIA car to do this, but really, if you're doing deep learning, NVIDIA is just where all the support is at. There's things like OpenCL that can be used for the AMD graphics cards, but AMD is not so much in the cloud, it's just not something that I've dealt with a great deal. The momentum is definitely there on the NVIDIA side, and that is has always been the machine learning GPU that I've used. Now on the CPU side, there's Intel, there's AMD. And I chose AMD for this particular build. AMD, there's advantages to AMD, there's advantages to Intel. And I'll have people disagree with me no matter which way I go on this one. Let me just describe to you the process that I went through. Intel still has single core the greatest amount of speed. Most of the tasks that I do in machine learning are not single core. They are multi-core. I'm in control of it. So this is not like I'm running some game on a machine and just hoping that the game studio designed this so that it's going to take advantage of my hardware. I'm custom building how these models actually divide up. I will use highly multi-threaded so I can get per core much cheaper on the AMD side. And in this machine, we're going to use a 24 core AMD. Now, once you've chosen your CPU and GPU, then that kind of rolls down into the motherboard. Most higher end-ish midline motherboards will support the PCI Express that you're going to deal with for a NVIDIA Titan or other car. The motherboard also has to support your CPU. Now I went with the latest the TRX4 type for the AMD mainly just so that I I would like this at least the the core of this computer to last me maybe five years. So I'll probably upgrade the GPU and CPU at least once before I move on to something entirely different. The motherboard dictates the power supply along with the GPU. GPU is really the driver for your power supply. I went a little bit higher than I probably needed to. I got a thousand watt power supply, but if I ever want to throw a second GPU, I'm pretty much ready. Now this computer here, I went with air cool. Now this is another personal decision that I will probably, probably annoy a few people with. But in discussion with the NVIDIA engineers, for a machine learning build compared to a gamer machine, 
where I'm going to probably leave this thing running constantly. And then you pretty much the RAM needs to be compatible with the motherboard and then hard drives. You probably want an M2 that you mount directly onto the motherboard. I highly recommend if you're going to build a computer to use PC Part Picker. I've got a link to the parts that I chose for this computer. Now you can see here PC Part Picker is you've got the complete list. You can see that I the parts that I have that made up this computer, the total wattage, you can see it's it's close to my 1000, but I've still got about 300 or so watts that I can still use on this. The link to my completed build is here. What's great about PC Part Picker is that it will show you which parts, at least as much as can be done, are compatible or incompatible. So let's get into the build. The first thing we're going to do, we want to get the motherboard assembled before we even put that into the case. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get the Ryzen chip into the socket there. So see how it says open 321? We're going to go ahead and follow that. So I'm gonna open, oh, so make sure that you use the, the torque wrench. The torque wrench isn't as important when we're unscrewing, but when you're tightening in it, that's very important because that makes sure that you don't crush the chip. And it kind of springs, kind of springs up when you, when you do this. Yep, there it goes. Okay, so that's, that's that. Then there's these two blue pins. You want to press those so that it releases. There we go. It's all very spring-loaded. That part comes out. That is going to be replaced with your Ryzen. Now this needs to come out too because underneath this are very sensitive little pins and we're going to take this and you can see all the little squares that it's trying very hard not to touch it and there it's ready so now we remove this cover and you can see below it all of the all of the pins we are now ready to lower that and then lower that and now close is one two three always use the Ryzen wrench Okay, as you tighten, you'll start to feel tension and you want to continue tightening it down until your wrench clicks like that. Don't keep clicking it. You could potentially damage the chip, but then you want to continue in the order that they specified. So the one, two, three. All right. And then three. All right, we have a Ryzen chip in there. The next thing I'm going to do is put the hard drive in. So we're using an M2 hard drive. I am going to put that, I could put that either here or here. This motherboard from MSI actually comes with another card that I could put in and I could put a whole bunch of, of those into there. I don't wanna put it in here because my graphics card is going to go here. You always put the graphics card in the first slot. So we're gonna use this one. And I'm gonna unscrew that. And there's two screws. Then you take the hard drive, the M2. This goes in at an angle. And then you, you bolt it down. So then you, you just go ahead and screw these back in. I did have a little confusion as far as if this cover goes back on or not. That depends on your motherboard. I had to remove this little piece so about the same size as the hard drive so that it was able to, to fit in there. And now we'll put the RAM in. You'll notice the CPU cooler that I grabbed there. It actually has the fan on the wrong part. That becomes a problem, and I'll mention that in a little bit in this video. Now you have to put the RAM in before the CPU cooler because the CPU cooler, if you're using an air cooler like this, it's going to completely block the RAM, which is unfortunate because this RAM has great RGB colors, but whatever. See how I put the first... RAM into that slot. I have 
eight slots total, just four sticks of RAM for the 64 gigabytes of RAM. So it's important that I don't just put them all in over on the left there where I'm pointing to. I have to space them out according to the specifications of the motherboard. I'll speed up the insertion of these last chips here. And thank you to Nathan for noticing that I was trying to put that last one in backwards. Also, it's important to note that the RAM chips on the left and right are in different orientations to each other, so they're, they're backwards of each other. Depending on the cooler type that you're using, you're going to have to put some sort of a platform on top of the Ryzen chip so that it can actually be mounted onto here. We're speeding through this part. It's a really a pretty simple process. Just make sure that you're using the correct bracket type. Refer to the instructions of your cooler. What you do to put one of these on here is you need a thermal paste. Thermal paste comes with your, your cooler. Some people actually buy better thermal paste. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this kind. You wanna make sure kind of everything fits before you actually put the thermal paste on because then it's kind of a mess if you have to, have to pull it back off. But you can buy more thermal paste. I may eventually try a water-cooled cooler on this. For now, the advice I was giving with NVIDIA, they suggested since this is a data science computer, I may run this constantly for like two days straight, a week straight, working on a problem. You want the more reliability of the air-cooled versus the water-cooled that don't necessarily want to run on a high compute problem. Now this is a matter of opinion and I'm sure different people feel differently on it. What I like to do with thermal paste, and I've seen several YouTube videos that do similar, is I'm basically going to draw a square and then an X through it. So you get your nice chip and then you make a big mess out of it. So I'm putting it through there and then I'm putting an X through it. So that way this is going to get as much of a connection as possible. And you wanna put about this much thermal paste on here because you don't want it leaking over the sides. It'll just go onto that metal there, which is not, which is not horrible. All right, I'm going to skip through this part where I mount it and we'll come back when I have this actually on there because I'm sure I will mess this up at least three times. Okay, so now we put in really the star of this show, the Titan RTX. I have it mounted here in the, the closest slot to the CPU, so that's slot one. If I was going to put a second Titan in here, I would put it really in this region, just further down, probably on top of the hard drive that I just put on, because you need some space for the SLI bridge. That might be something I look into in the future, and I definitely built this system with the idea that I could put two high-end GPUs in there. Now the Titan needs these PCIe Express power connectors. So let me go ahead and connect those in. All right, there we go. One and the other. Okay, push those down. Titan should be ready to go. Now, looking at this, this setup, you can see I've got the CPU cooler on top here. That is taking up really considerable space. So if you're going with air cooling, definitely make sure that you account for that and account for enough space. Okay, here we are, the moment of truth. The computer is built. I've hooked it up so that I've got a keyboard and a monitor and a mouse. Let's see if it boots. Now, I'll be honest with you, it did not boot the first time. And you can probably hear it spanning and spinning up right now. The thing that I did wrong that caused it not to boot was I it was actually a setting on the monitor. I switched over to HDMI and it seems to be working fine now. I need to figure out why DVI was not working. I would, I would like to use that interface as well. So when it boots up, you should see a BIOS screen because you don't have any operating system installed on this. So the next step is to install the operating system. Now here you can see the boot order. And I, the hard drive is first, then we have a USB hard drive, that's what we're going to install it from, 
and then USB keys, I don't even care about these. So what I tend to do for this is you see I have these, these keys, USB drives, and each of these I have labeled. I use a variety of different options, but I'm going to use Windows 10 for this one. So let me just put this into the back of the computer so that it can boot. This lets us boot Windows 10. Booting now. Yay, Windows! Installing Windows. There's tons of videos on how to do this. So I'm not going to repeat that here, just fast forward through. While I mention other view videos, major, major respect to Jay's Two Cents and Linus Tech Tips. I watched lots of their videos literally while I was filming this. So definitely check out videos on how to insert your particular type of chip and other things from them. Also, thank you to my nephew Nathan, who had to go home just before we actually got Windows up and running. Thank you for helping with the build. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in building computers, definitely click the like button. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know that you like this. I can do more videos on this topic as well. I also will be doing a couple of videos on how you can get this high-end GPU performance without having to build a machine from scratch.